Hey, good afternoon everybody, Uneducated Economist here. So, I've had a few people ask me about the yield curve lately. Um, in fact, I've uh, recently got a video um, that was sent to me, email, um, kind of talking about the yield curve and how we are starting to see this inversion taking place. And a lot of people are looking at the 20 year, 30 year and saying, look at this inversion of the yield curve taking, you know, happening right here between the 20 year and the 30 year. Now, typically just like anything else, when you are taking out a loan, if you take out a shorter term loan as opposed to a longer term loan, you're going to pay lesser of an interest rate on the shorter term. If you take out a longer term loan, then you pay a higher interest rate for it, right? The longer you tie up their money, the more of an interest rate you have to pay. And it's very much similar inside of the U.S. Treasury market. So if you have a 30-year Treasury, it should be paying a lot more than, say, you know, the shorter term two-year Treasury. This would make you know a lot of sense on a typical market, but occasionally what will end up happening is, is that those shorter term yields will rise above the longer term. And what this is happening, or what's happening here, is the investors are saying, hey, we are, sh we are scared of the short term. We are very nervous about tying up our money. We see buying opportunities for other things out there. And if you want to, you know, if you want to borrow our money, if you want to take our money, we're gonna to have to get a higher return for it. We are demanding a more compensation for the risk that we are taking on on the short term. Does all that kind of make sense? So if that happens and the yields begin to rise as the investors are holding back from purchasing those items or those, those particular assets. So then you'll begin to see the short term rise above the long term. That's the inversion of the yield curve taking place. Now really, when people are saying inversion of the yield curve, a lot of times they're referring to the two year and the 10 year. When the two-year crosses over the 10-year, this has typically been a, a, a sign of future recession coming. Like this is a, a leading indicator that the people are nervous on for the two-year time period and that a recession, like generally a pullback in purchases and slowdown in the economy, slowdown in hiring, all that stuff begins to take place. And then you actually have a pullback in, in economic activity. This is where the recession really begins. Now, almost always, the Federal Reserve will lift interest rates right into, like heading into the recession. Ultimately, the Federal Reserve wants to get their ammo back. They want to be able to drop interest rates prior to a recession kicking in. This is very difficult for them considering how low the Fed funds rates are. Like a 5% interest rate drop would lead them down to like a negative 2.5% interest, even if they were to get interest rates up to where they want to. This is, this is the scary situation that we're going into. The Federal Reserve will not be able to drop interest rates into the next, next recession. I mean, not enough to do anything. Like I said, at 2.5% on the Fed funds rate, that does not leave them a whole lot of room to move. So this two-year tenure, when that crosses over, that's generally the sign that you're looking for. But a while back, I had done a video talking about the five-year, 30-year, and this is what Gr Alan Greenspan watches, and he said that when this widens, when you see the five-year, 30-year, the spread between the two, when that widens, that shows corporate management's willingness to invest. That's what he said. And so if you see this start to shrink, like the, the, the spread between the 30-year and the five-year, that would be the opposite, right? If the widening of it is corporate management's willingness to invest, then if it's if it narrows, then that would be corporate management's less willingness to invest, right? I mean, that's it's just the opposite of, of, of the spread. So that would lead me to believe that corporate, like pursuing expansions, hiring, all that other stuff, if you see this, this gap narrowing, then that would put a damper on that kind of activity going into the future. And if you go and you look at the five year, 30 year spread right now, it's pretty, it's, it's dropped dramatically as well over the last couple of, well, especially over the last year. Same with the spread between the two year and the 10 year. Now they haven't crossed over yet. They haven't, you know, actually inverted to the point where it can say, hey, there's the inversion of the yield curve. The inversion that we are seeing right now, the 10 year, or I'm sorry, the 20 year and the 30 year, we had done a video on this about, I don't know, I, I guess a, a while back, six months ago, maybe not, maybe not quite that long ago. And uh, the inversion actually took place back in October. And um, in, 
this I don't think had as much to do with like investors' confidence or like worry about the future. I think really more it had to do with the supply and demand. And just like anything else out there, it depends on how liquid the item is, on how much it's going to be worth. Like, um, well, let me see if I can kind of explain it. Like, the 30-year is a very common treasury. Like, everybody trades in the 30-year. And so when it comes to liquidity, like being able to get in and out of that trade, the 30-year is, is huge, right? So there's a very big pool of buyers and sellers when you're in this particular market. The risk as far as holding on to a treasury when you have a liquid market as, as much as that is, is lower than if there was less participants, okay? So if the pool of buyers and sellers was smaller, then the risk would go up as you may or may not be able to get in and out of the trade as easy. The 20 year has less buyers and sellers in it. It's not as popular as the 30 year. In fact, I think, I don't even know, like they quit issuing out 20 year treasuries for a while. So you can imagine like if you are a buyer seller of treasuries and the 30 year is a hugely popular one that everybody has, the 20 year, although you know, it's in there with it. It's not nearly as popular. Well, the risk of being in a 20 year treasury as opposed to a 30 year treasury is much higher. And if you are taking on risk, then you're going to demand higher yield for it. And that's probably more of a reason why you're seeing the 20 year over the 30 year. And then there's another inversion taking place a little bit farther down the yield curve as well. Um, like the seven and the 10 or something like that. But again, it's just slightly like it is just barely there. And so it leads me to believe, is this a supply and demand issue taking place or is it actual nervousness happening within the, in the investors or the markets themselves? We are starting to see that low end move up. And once it does start to flatten the yield curve completely out and that two year and 10 year invert, and we see the five year and 30 year get closer, I think those are definite signs of a recession and they are heading that way. So keep an eye on those things. I mean, th that's what I'm going to like, because everybody's saying, is it or isn't a recession coming? It's going to be hard to say. Like, these are the leading indicators that usually that usually show themselves prior to a recession happening. Federal Reserve raising interest rates, inversion of the yield curve, slowdown in economic activity, inflation running. High. I mean, all these things are are showing themselves. So. Who knows? Um, I think, honestly, uh, six months from now is probably going to be a much better sign of things to come or what kind of economic conditions that we are going to be facing. You know, from at this point, it's going to be really anybody's assumptions, like how much the Federal Reserve actually raises going into the future. I think that's probably going to be like the bigger debate that happens out there. The Fed will raise the interest rates, they're probably going to get them up to the two, two and a half percent. Who knows how quickly they do that? I guess it would really depend on the inflation expectation that comes going into the future already. That's slowing down. We talked a little bit about that this morning. But if the Federal Reserve can can raise interest rates up to that two, two and a half percent, and then probably, you know, slow the economy down within the next two years. I could um, I could see like a recession happening, maybe even quicker than that. How the Federal Reserve reacts to that is going to be very interesting. They're going to drop interest rates some, but I could only assume that the central bank digital currency will probably be alive and well and in play at that point and ready for distribution of stimulus checks and whatever, you know, UBI kind of kind of concept they come up with. But it's going to be a difficult one because, I mean, if you imagine how much fiscal spending it took to pull us through this pandemic-induced recession, can you imagine what, like, a corporate or sovereign debt recession would be like? I mean, whoo. All right, uneducated economists, you guys let me know.